Hey, back. What's up? It's the Culture Detective here investigating your favorite TV shows. And today I'm going to be doing a TV review on The Boys Season 4. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, as you can probably tell uh, with my background, I have switched locations once again. And right now I am back at the filthy capitalist consumerist land of Los Angeles. Let's go, babies. So um, anyways, I finally finished watching The Boys Season 4 last night. Let's talk about it. This is a TV show based off of the comics written by Garth Ennis, and it is adapted into a show um, by Eric Kripke. And uh, I've already reviewed and talked extensively about The Boys Seasons 1, 2, and 3, and um, I like all three of them. In fact, I think The Boys overall is a really solid show that is entertaining from front to back. Sure, there are some filler episodes that I do not necessarily care for, but there were barely any moments in the show where I just straight up thought, okay, this is terrible. This is garbage. Um, overall, it's it's good. The Boy Season 4 is another really solid season that I don't have too many complaints about. Sure, The Boy Season 4 takes things a little slow, but it's still equally as entertaining, if not more, especially in some of the more exciting highs. But the reason why I say that Season 4, especially the first half, takes things a bit slower is because almost every single character sort of has a personal journey here with Frenchie uh, reuniting with uh, love interest. And um, that love interest is somebody he has hurt before and he sort of has to deal with that past. Kimiko having to deal with her past when she was abused as a child. Huey having to deal with uh, his parents, the mom who left him and his dad being sick. Uh, once again, I will never get used to Simon Pegg speaking in American English. I will never get used to that. Him and Martin Freeman. They're both quintessentially British. I can never get used to them sounding American. And then with his family, Butcher and his hallucinations, he's doing a little Mr. Robot here. Oh my god. Even Homelander has an introspective moment where on episode 4, he sort of goes back to the place where he grew up, a lab, and he just destroys everything and kills everyone. Minor spoilers, but you know how that goes. Um, and I like it. I like that these little introspective moments flesh out the characters. Sure, I don't think it's a great idea to throw all these introspective moments into one season. I do think that if they pad it out a little more, it would be nice. But overall, I'm not complaining. I think all these sort of backstories and personal journeys are entertaining simply because the story itself has already hooked me. So wherever you take these characters, I am already intrigued. Now, there's nothing too necessarily shocking or insane throughout season four, at least up until the last two episodes. But overall, The Boys is like a well-oiled machine. It just pumps out one good episode after another in a very steady pace. Each storyline has its ups and downs. Each storyline has its intriguing moments. Um, episode 5 is almost like a bottle episode where a lot of the protagonists sort of walk around in the woods. And this episode is actually a pretty interesting commentary on man versus nature or man versus animals. Because even though Kimiko and Victoria are super powerful, also starlight, um, but they can't defeat some flying sheep because man-made whores are worse than men. And uh, episode 6, the cocktail party episode, I freaking love it. It's also by far the grossest episode. So gross, so ridiculous, it's actually hilarious. It's straight up comedy. So we have this web weaver character who is this um, very um, dirty, stinky, weird guy who just slacks off and sleeps all day, Huey has to pretend to be Web Weaver and infiltrate a cocktail party. And what comes next is, um, oh, I want to sneeze. And what comes next is one of the grossest things I've seen on the boys so far. It's just rich people 
rich, powerful people and their weird fetishes and their strange sexual things. And it goes so far. I've never seen something like this on TV. And it's honestly kind of hilarious. Um, but overall, this is like the grossest season so far. And I like that most of the violence here doesn't seem gratuitous. They all seem like they come from a reasonable place. Like whenever something really gross happens, it's usually because it's, it's the plot. It's the plot, guys. Um, also, this is the most politically charged season so far, which is where the politics come in. Um, a lot of conservatives and a lot of alt-right watching this show um, hated it, which is weird. Like, why are you watching The Boys to begin with, you know? Um, I'd imagine a lot of alt-right people would be sort of like ex um, isolated from the rest of society, sort of isolated from the internet, but... Uh, so a lot of conservatives watched The Boys, and um, The Boys finally unveiled its mask. It's poking fun at the right all along. Even though since season one, it's already kind of obvious, but the alt-right and the conservatives, some of them, are not smart enough to understand that. So when The Boys season four finally decided to not mask itself and go full-blown sort of laughing at the right and and by full-blown I mean full freaking blown like with the homelander representing white supremacy the transphobia all the um conspiracy stuff uh anti-vaccine stuff uh all of these things sort of come out as part of homelander's agenda and, and especially Firecracker, which I'm going to talk about a little bit here. So a lot of conservatives got pissed off. Like, whoa, why are you suddenly making fun of me? Even though the show has been making fun of you since day one. You're just not smart enough to realize it. Um, Firecracker, I actually really like his character. Uh, I, I kind of like her character. Some people didn't like her that much because she's not like a super powerful person. But that's a fucking point, you see. She's here not because she's some menacing, powerful person. She's here because she's political. So at this point, the Seven isn't seven powerful superheroes. The Seven is just some maniac, powerful dude's administration. It's a political cabinet, essentially. So again, this, sh this show at this point is more of a political thriller than any season before, which is what I absolutely love. I also think the finale is great. Lots of subversions of expectations, um, deaths I didn't see coming, and it sort of builds to a season five that is akin to The Handmaid's Tale. I mean, if Project 2025 goes through, we might as well be living in Gilead. Um, but the only major gripe I have with the season is that Starlight's character is being sidelined. We didn't see much of her, and I think um, her character is not that compelling here. Um, it would be nice to see her have a major change in the next season. Who knows? But overall, it is a really solid season. I enjoyed myself watching it. I think it's great. And I'm giving it a light 8. Yeah, some dialogues are too like convenient, but I let it slide. It's too campy. So, have you seen The Boys? Comments below. Let me know. Subscribe if you want more. Thanks for watching.